we've moved into the polish phase of Squadron 42, which means extra emphasis on ensuring things feel fun. This means focusing on the small and large elements of the game, such as dialing in combat encounters, but also looking at the feel of how you control your character or vehicle and making sure it's immersive as possible. We've paid extra attention to how your character reacts when in their ship, so that you feel like an actual pilot, whether that's firing your weapons, taking hits, or punching the afterburners to get to cover. Ship AI has also seen huge improvements with closer engagement distances and more varied behaviors. And with our new precision targeting mode, the action has never been as close. With the aim now on polish, we've organized the project into self-sufficient strike teams, so we can focus on individual areas to deliver the best experience. This allows us to bring all disciplines together with a unified vision of enhancing the gameplay by seamlessly blending it with polished visuals, final cinematic performances, and our ever-improving technology. They didn't see the boat, kid. You're good to keep going. We're also dialing in gameplay features, such as the ship flight model, for both atmosphere and space, which covers master modes, control surfaces, and our gold standard HUD and MFDs. Our interaction system for both the world and your character have also seen additional improvements, allowing us to hone and craft environmental puzzles unique to each location, while allowing us to tell the story of the world around you. The military multi-tool is an essential piece of equipment for every pilot that integrates all attachments into a single handheld device and allows us to create really interesting challenges, including physics-based puzzles using our updated rope tech. Unidentified vessels, this is the UEE Navy. Power down your ships and stand by for processing. Off the Our scanning, targeting and marker system has also seen an overhaul, allowing us to highlight only the essential information that you need, such as key objectives, mission targets and high-level scan information, while keeping your overall view as clean as possible. FPS combat and stealth, which has seen a suite of improvements from improved looting, weapon feel and balance, realistic scopes and smoother locomotion, alongside our new and improved FPS radar and scanner that provides you an overview of the battlefield but at the cost of ramping up your own emissions. We've also seen the introduction of our Maelstrom powered destructible environment, which adds a layer of dynamism to the experience alongside our improved AI that can now have hundreds of combinations of traits that allow us to create unique and challenging combat encounters that really push your tactical awareness and skill.
We play and review the builds regularly and call our action points in each level from start to finish on where we need to improve the gameplay. This is an incredibly rewarding stage of development for me and the team, as the ultimate vision of the game is realized, allowing us to craft an experience that we can be really proud of. One specific area that I'm excited to dial in is the feeling of the player interacting with the world around them. Catching you in. As it's a core component of Squadron and really grounds the world that you inhabit. We've made sure that any interaction in the environment is physically represented by a character animation to keep you in the moment and fully immerse you in the experience that we've created. Ultimately, this is the final phase of gameplay iteration before we fully transition into optimization and stability on the road to release. Here's your trail. This is Colton. Come back. Always trips me out to see terraforming setups like this. Web tried explaining how atmosphere processors work. It really shows how far we've come. What the hell is she? Part of this immersive adventure, you'll find cutting-edge cinematic storytelling thoughtfully crafted to fully immerse you into your story. We fight today! So in 40 years from now, when you're surrounded by everything and everyone you hold dear, and they ask, what did you do in the Battle of Vega? You can look them in the eye and say, I heard the line. Men and women of the Second Fleet, I am proud to stand with you today. Good luck. Push your butt. Nice speech. Any word from the recon team? Not yet. Well, let's get into position. Throughout the polish phase, our team is taking every opportunity to push things to the next level. Tell me you're expecting company. This is not good. The Cine team is focused on finalizing edit lock on all of our big action as well as all smaller character sequences. I could have pulled this off of the Galactopedia. Yeah, probably, but I think their solar mass calculations are wrong though. Well, this is ridiculous. How so? We are now able to adjust our shot composition to final cameras thanks to recently crafted space vistas and level art being content complete now. It'd be nice to know how much of a shitstorm we're flying into. More like a hellstorm, Blue. One you ain't gonna fly out of. <laughs> Shut up! Now, I hadn't seen another ship that wasn't trying to kill me in days. Let alone a hauler, let alone a Jean. So you can imagine my surprise. Detailed lighting passes can be done on hero sequences so we can show our cast and convey their emotions in the best light possible. And we're making sure our cinematics are triggering as fluid as we can craft them so they form a coherent concerto with the rest of the player's narrative experience. Mr. Wexler, this is Lieutenant Commander Colton. Oh, Commander, hey. Julian Wexler, I'm the field manager of this little operation. Welcome aboard the Archon. What brings the Navy to this little corner of the universe? We got you flying with Lieutenant Commander Colton. He's one of our best. As others will share, this is the most rewarding chapter of development, which allows us to truly experience the visceral and oftentimes emotional moments that our narrative provides. How did you handle it after Vega? I'm not sure I handled anything. It helps to remember that stuff like this is supposed to hurt. 
I've never been good at dealing with problems I can't fix. Well, this is one that you don't have to do alone. That's good to know. For the animation teams, polish phase means refining the social aspects of Squadron 42 that occur between the various missions and getting the behaviors implemented across all of its chapters. Here we're dialing in the hangar to make it as immersive and believable an experience as possible. That'll do it. Oh, done. Mm -hmm. Hey, well, For example, we're launching off a space carrier, but we still ground the feel in real world actions, refueling, repairing, and inspecting and making sure that your next flight mission is a success. This means we're looking out for pops, hiccups, or awkward transitions, and ensuring that everything flows and looks like all the great mocap performances we've captured. Let's ready some extra ice packs out of storage. Whenever gunners are on full rotation, you can always count on at least one of them getting hurt. We also have you covered in everyday life. The medical staff work diligently for their patients, whether they're players or crew. We really want you to feel part of an authentic crew, an important part of the UEE Navy and an enormous universe of people going about their everyday lives. Let's go ahead and clear for takeoff. Ground crew, prep bay for takeoff. Copy that. Hangar, ready for launch. Takeoff approved, Baron 2. You have the ball. Ready and hold on as you're launched off the deck of the carrier. Baron 2, you are cleared for launch. Have a safe flight, Baron 2. We want you to not only decide how you play the game, but to feel as if the people you interact with are in that world with you. I would have never thought a shotgun could be so pretty. Damn, this R-97 is sleek as hell. Like a lot of other weapons in Gemini's arsenal, it has a higher rate of fire than most guns of its type. We're working to support a feel of authenticity through world traversals, running, jumping, and climbing interactions with objects and the environment, solid weapon gameplay and enemy reactions, as well as combat realities, such as weapon malfunctions. or in close encounters of the more lethal kind. <laughs> Ooh, that's gonna hurt in the morning. As we continue to focus on the quality experience, we've been working closely with our art teams, and it's been exciting to see their environments come to life alongside us. While animation and design have been populated in locations, polish phase for my teams means making huge advancements in the quality of our characters and environments. We've established our standard with recognizable characters like Mark Hamill, Julian Anderson, and Gary Oldman. And we're now applying this to the rest of the cast, 
and identifying any remaining tech requirements that need to be closed out. The story of Squadron 42 takes you through a variety of diverse locations of varying scales and styles. We shared glimpses of several environments before, and there's still plenty out there for you to discover. One of the main challenges the art team has had to face during the development of Squadron 42 is ensuring the visuals are complementary to the narrative of the script. The mood and feeling of a space is just as important to us as it is making sure we hit the visual quality that CIG has become known for. No good, we can't hack it from this side. Graves, we've got a locked door. Can you give us access? No, I'm afraid that's a negative, Steve. Uh... I would have to add you to our system to give you override permissions, and uh, yeah, there's a lot involved in that. What happened quickly? Okay, we'll figure something out. Everything you see during the campaign has been heavily inspired by the classics of 70s and 80s sci-fi, but with a modern twist. We want everything you see to feel like it has a soul, its own personality, and tells of a history long before you arrived. Crafting interesting flight spaces and their connecting tissue has been one of the more unique challenges we've needed to overcome for Squadron. Developing our VDB tech to blend seamlessly between tighter traversal spaces and into wider space vistas and planets has proved incredibly difficult but rewarding ensuring that Squadron flows seamlessly from one chapter to the next, without interruption. Creating a diverse array of locations is essential to us. Our environments need to work from a variety of scales. We need to pay close attention to detail, whether we're working in a dirty engineering vent, or navigating the debris of a dying star, wondering what may be around that next corner, or even who may live there. How would they have survived? and what state of mind may they be in. We've worked closely with our social teams in delivering a cohesive social experience when you're taking some downtime from our refined flight and FPS missions or even missions of the more eerie kind. We'll be introducing new space stations on a massive scale, all brought together and designed to be as tangible as possible. We've thought about their function, their age, and try to ensure there's a progression in artistic style with each station as you progress through the game. As you can see today, the teams are working incredibly hard ramping up the detail and quality to match the breadth of our vision for Squadron 42.